you can see there in the bottom corner of your screen there, folks, we are about to see a splashdown from those astronauts who were at the International Space Station. They were supposed to be there for just 10 days. They ended up being there for nine months. So let's just tap into NASA TV for just a moment and listen to what's going on. The, the, the Dragon spacecraft went from orbital velocity about 17,500 miles per hour down to about 350 miles per hour. So that really gives you a sense of why that plasma builds up on the exterior of the capsule thanks to the heat shield and the work that it does. Those drogue parachutes will slow it down from 350 to about 119 miles per hour. We can see... 15 kilometers. Brace for drogue window. We can see seat rotation happening inside the capsule. Great to get those first views of our crew members. Once again, the capsules are going about 350 miles per hour when the drogues are deployed. Um, those For us all morning, uh, it's coming to a head. It's getting close now, Brent. So just what's going on? Yeah, everything's looking pretty good going by the uh, comms from the uh, Crew 9 and Mission Control. Uh, we have pristine weather conditions for this descent and eventual splashdown off the coast of Tallahassee, Florida. The, this is the uh, self-flying Dragon capsule that you're watching and it has been used before and it is in good shape after uh, you know the rigours that it was put through upon wow. re-entry and uh, a 17-hour flight from the International Space Station. You'll soon see in a couple minutes four rather large parachutes deploy as it splashes down. Uh, inside this capsule is uh, Butch oh. Wilmore and Sonny Williams, yeah. names we all know just, by just now. Just pause if you, oh, would, if you wouldn't mind, Brent. Let's just listen in here. You can hear the crowd here. The crowd here very excited as Dragon Freedom continues to make its way back to planet Earth. Next up, we'll stand by for the main deployment of the parachutes. The mains are quite a bit larger. You'll be able to notice the difference on your screen once they deploy, and they continue to ensure that the Dragon uh, spacecraft slows down even further. As we mentioned, Freedom will be traveling 16 miles per hour when it splashes down off the coast of Tallahassee, Florida, here at 2.57 p.m. Pacific time this afternoon. And there we go. We have visual on four healthy mains. That view was from inside. Freedom copy. That view was from inside one of the buckets where the parachutes are located. So we see a great view there of the reefing on those parachutes. And as those parachutes, those main parachutes begin to inflate fully, four beautiful, healthy names. Oh. Now awaiting visuals of splashdown. Thanks, Freedom. We'll start to hear Commander Nick Haig. Copy, 1,000. As we heard right there, Commander Nick Haig will be calling out the altitude of the Dragon capsule from here on out. Landing in water is simpler and provides more margin against unlikely parachute issues. You can see those, uh, those parachutes continuing to slow the Dragon capsule down. And if you're just joining us, you're looking at 800 meters. A live view of Crew 9, just minutes away from splashing down off the hmm. coast of Tallahassee, Florida. Splash down two minutes from now at 2:57 p.m. Pacific. We do have four healthy mains really doing the job there. Just breathtaking views of a calm, glass-like ocean off the coast of Tallahassee, Florida. Crew 9, just minutes away from splashing down. This is really such an incredible shot. Uh, that Coffee, was 600. That was a live view from our recovery vessel, uh, Megan, which is stationed a couple miles away from the splashdown site. We can see the crew there using their uh, their restraints as resting places for their arms. They were just in space moments ago, <laughs> so their arms were able to float freely. 400 meters. This is a gorgeous bluebird day here that we have for the splashdown of Crew 9. It's incredible to think that the Dragon capsule just minutes ago was going over 17,000 17, miles per hour and now gently coasting to a soft splashdown. 200. Copy, 
Copy, 200 meters. Brace for splashdown. As you can see there on your screen, continuing to monitor progress of the Dragon spacecraft. And we're going to stand by for splashdown located in the Gulf of America um, off the coast of Tallahassee, Florida. And splashdown, Crew 9 back on Earth. Good main release. Copy splash down. We see main shoots cut. Nick, Alex, Butch, Sunny, on behalf of SpaceX, welcome home. It is, uh, it is an amazing thing. What a ride. I see a capsule full of grins ear to ear. And as you can see on your screen, we have visual confirmation of splashdown. Dragon Freedom has returned home and NASA astronauts. System safety verifications are in progress. We'll report back when recovery personnel are in route. Uh, understand and, uh, we're in section two, four decimal 800 uh, landing response. And uh, looking for your word. Is necessary. In the distance, we can see the recovery vessel making its way. Copy, you're in section two for the environmental assessment in 4.800. That is not necessary today. Understand. Raising five. So we will continue to have communications between the core and Nick Haig, the commander of Crew Dragon Freedom, which just splashed down two minutes ago off the coast of Tallahassee, Florida. Dragon Freedom has returned home with NASA astronauts Nick Haig, Sonny Williams, Butch Wilmore, and Roscosmos cosmonaut Alexander Gorbanov. They're back on Earth after approximately 17 hours of a return journey from space. The SpaceX recovery ship and team have been waiting for Dragon splashdown, and they will now make their way to the splashdown location. The teams have been ready and waiting about three nautical miles away, so it's going to take them about 30 minutes or so to make their way and to SpaceX Freedom. Sure we're in stable one. Copy stable one. We see the same. going to take about 30 minutes for the recovery team to make their way over to Nick, Sonny, Butch, and Alexander, who are still seated and secured inside that Dragon spacecraft there on your screen. Incredible views there of that thermal protection system, or TPS. Um, that Dragon capsule was pristine white color uh, before it departed the station, and we can see how the reentry phase, um, you know, the thermal protection system did its job. Now, if you're wondering what that hole, that like bucket area is, that is uh, underneath the, the side hatch. That is where the main parachutes were stored. So when we saw the Dragon capsule docked at station, it looked very different. Um, that the, the, the panel that protects and covers the main parachutes, that was uh, still intact as well as the panels that enclose where the drogue parachutes are located. We can see those fast Freedom. boats. SpaceX is go for recovery personnel to approach. Expect personnel alongside in the next few minutes. Freedom copies. We can see those fast boats. We weren't kidding when we said they were fast. While it does take about 30 minutes for the main recovery vessel to make its way over to the capsule, these fast boats uh, will be doing a couple of things simultaneously. A couple of them are going to be working to retrieve the parachutes that you see in the background there of this drone shot. Those parachutes will be retrieved from the ocean surface. We want to make sure we 
um, we are able to pull those out. The recovery vessel there closest to the spacecraft is going to be performing some safety checks. We can see there they're using an instrument that is basically working to detect if there are any hypergolic vapors or fumes that are still residing in uh, and or around the Draco thruster nozzles or, or outlets. Uh, the hypergolic fuel, which is necessary for on-orbit uh, on-orbit burns to con to maneuver the the spacecraft. Unfortunately, those hypergolics are um, are are unable to be breathed. They they are toxic, and so this team here is doing those initial safety checks to make sure that it is safe for the rest of the recovery team to approach the spacecraft. They're also checking to make sure that any residuals from the, the pyros are, are safe and um, are not going to cause any issues. We can see the team working their way around the spacecraft to do these, um, event, basically these, these sniff tests on all of those Draco thrusters.